through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by two of the stars of the How to Train Your Dragon Arena Spectacular. Is that is that the correct name? All right. Uh, rawr, me, uh, Newton. Is that, uh, yeah, yeah, close, close. A little yeah, bit too much really, on the yeah. Rawr. <laughs> now you got me thinking Rawr. Okay, Rawr, yeah, me, yeah, Newton. Uh, Rawr, me, yeah, yeah, that was And, it. and uh, Sarah McCreener? Yes, that that yes. All right. You guys are... Hiccup and Astrid, respectively, for those who have seen the movie, which I am a big fan of. Um, let's start with a more general question, though, because this is the first thing that popped in my mind when I hear about the show. <laughs> How does one arrive in a place where you're in a show like this? Like, this isn't necessarily <laughs> traditional theater. It's not, it's not real. I mean, it's obviously not a film per se, but like, it's, it's its own kind of <laughs> hybrid thing. Like, how does one arrive here? Where do you get the skill set to train well, a dragon? Well, yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, yeah. how do you get the skill set to train a dragon? How do you, like, get in a position where you're like, all right, I'm going to try out for that thing? Like, I, it's, there's so much that I'm like, I don't understand how this even comes together. That I was wondering how you guys arrived in this place. Well, I mean, when I first went to the audition, I'm not sure about Sarah as well, but I, I had no idea what it was going to be when I first went to this audition. Like, yeah, I mean, because yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not been done before. We had no idea what to what to expect. So, I mean, just like any other film or um, musical or stage production, we had to do auditions. And I, I mean, our agent yeah. sent us through to auditions, and um, it was like a circus workshop. I mean, the director was asking for everything. Yeah. The, you know, he was asking for some dancing, some acting, acrobatics. Did you know really? that it was even connected to How to Train Your Dragon at that point, or was it just like we're doing some <laughs> crazy acrobatic show looking no, for it, people? No, it did they said have they were the were going name. to do a live, a live version of How to Train Your okay. Dragon, and yeah. that's about all we knew. Yeah, just the that name. Was, that was about <laughs> it. Like we didn't know how it was going to be possible, and of course, I, I'd seen the movie, but I'm not sure about. Yeah, I yeah. hadn't seen the. <laughs> movie straight away but yeah. uh, after my very first edition I saw it and I instantly fell in love with How it. How confusing yeah. was that then for your um, first edition? Because like if you hadn't seen it before the first edition you're just like I don't like I guess there's dragons in this thing. <laughs> well I mean yeah I mean in the audition the director was basically like the first time that um, I auditioned he was asking us to go down one by one and do some acrobatic moves and I'm like okay I'll do my best things you know see what I can do and then uh, he said and then I want you to get to the end of the mat and stop and look up at this big dragon. And I'm like, hang on, what? A dragon? Okay, <laughs> I'll try. And he's like, now look up. So I'm looking up and I'm like, oh, a dragon. And he's like, no, look higher. And I'm like, whoa, like how high do I have to look? Are these? How big are these dragons going to be? I mean, we did, did not you know. Did know they're even like animatronic at that point? Or did you assume they'd be like, that you was know, something, film or something? I mean, when you don't know the information behind how they work, you don't, you, you just think they're real. Yeah. I mean, it's, we've been working on it for a year and I still think they're real. And I'm, I know how they work, but I mean, it's so technical. <laughs> So yeah. it's just incredible to Not see exactly them. Not exactly the biggest science myself. <laughs> yeah. So are you like gymnasts in your background then? Because it's like, I mean, I'm not an actor, but I don't know if I'd necessarily go to like a, a gig and then be like, do a gymnastic move. And I'd be like, I, I don't, a somersault. Like, I don't know <laughs> yeah. what that would be for me. Um, well, a somersault works, but I'm primarily a dancer. And um, through dancing, I've just kind of self-taught how to, you know, acrobatic moves. Um, and yeah, it was just like... You know, in auditions, you pull out the best things that you can do and just hope for the best, so... <laughs> the, um, Nigel, our director, actually really, like, in the audition, wanted a really versatile kind of um, um, skill set, really. So, I mean, we, I, we, we essentially had, like... I mean, in the cast now, we've got break dancers. We've got, like, you know, this guy, that, that, this guy Godfrey, who um, who trained in, you know, China for five years learning wushu, which is, like, a, a, like a martial arts. Yeah. You know, um... Uh, we have the six-time world champion at sports karate, like Gemma wow. Newton, who's um, the other Astrid as well, who's like a ninja at non That's a bit scary. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a dad, so she's a six-time world champion in sport karate. That's, that's so. some hardcore stuff, though. <laughs> that was one of the things I was trying to figure out, though, was... Um, and may, I mean, maybe this shows my ignorance towards my time going to the theater or something like that. But there are two of each 
or two people playing each character? Is that just to alternate, or is that like an understudy thing? How do, exactly does that work? Um, that's only for Hiccup and Astrid. I oh, mean, okay. Hiccup especially. He's he's in the entire show. Yeah, he's on stage like the entire time, and it's a very physical and very challenging show. So, um, it's kind of doing both in a way. Like you're doing really like I mean to give us a break in a way, as well as the the fact that because we have two Hiccups and two Astrids, you know, we've got a chance that if if one of us did become injured in the show. That then, you know, the other one can you know, we've, on. yeah. we've got someone else who so, yeah. can step in. And from what it looked like, according to the website, it looked like people were cast from all over the world. I mean, you two were both from Australia, but it, there's like Los Angeles, Australia, yeah. blah, 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 you're talking England, about France, France yeah. England, Asia, like, all over America. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a very international group. And that's just the, the actors. I mean, the whole company behind... The, the behind the show backstage they're from around the world yeah, as well Canadians so. New Zealanders we've wow. got I mean like yeah. really <laughs> really we just um yeah um basically uh when we um we went around I'm just trying to think <laughs> yeah, I lost my train of thought there Oh, Sorry, yeah. Well, how about, how about this? Yeah. Like, what is it like working in such an international environment? Because it seems like, I mean, as you said, there are people from all around the world. Does that create, like, a, a fun, different <laughs> experience? Or is it challenging because there are so many different people with so many different, you know, like, cultural contexts, you know, slang in one language yeah. might mean n- nothing to somebody else? We've, um, the, really big mix We've learned yeah. a lot. Yeah. And actually, something that's really funny at the moment, I mean, we've been working for a year, but at the moment in the girls' dressing room, we have um, Emily, who's French, and she's constantly on her computer learning and perfecting her English. And then we have Gemma, who's American, and she's learning French. French, yeah. So I'm constantly wow. hearing all these different languages being learned, and we're all kind Wait, of they're learning on their computers, yeah, yeah. not doing it with like each other. Like, oh, this, no, I know, it's very strange. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it it's seems like, like that would be like work. the easiest yeah. thing to do. <laughs> yeah, um, well, yeah, I mean, a lot of us, like, well, I, I haven't picked up any French yet, but, you know, it is kind of handy having that. And especially when we traveled to Montreal and they speak French there, I mean, mm. we kind of just stuck together oh, so oh, we yeah. could yeah. travel yeah. around. Um, but it's been so interesting. It's very um, cultural and we do learn a lot from each other. And as far as, like, I could tell, this is one of the bigger touring shows of, Period. It's like, if not the biggest. Um, what is that experience like? I mean, do you guys? It's. I mean, you guys are here in Seattle. I think a week before the show gets here. Are you actually in Seattle, or are you guys back someplace else before the show actually comes here? Do you guys get to like enjoy it, or is it just all so so I much think, that yeah. you can't even really sit step back and you know be like, all right, this is kind of an amazing experience. Well. Basically, we do get. I mean, um, as as the performers, we kind of we do get like two days off a week to go and okay. go and see the city. A little which bit is of really a cool. A little bit of a break to go and uh, go and you know see the city and see all the really, you know, the nice parts and everything. But um, yeah, as soon as it gets to the weekend, you know, that's when all the kids are off school. So I mean, we yeah. have like you know five shows in a weekend, and it becomes the <laughs> really busy stage. We'll be like locked in the arena for like. You know, it'll feel like the days just mesh together pretty much. Well, this is the thing yeah. that was kind of just like bananas when I was looking at it. It was like yeah. the <laughs> schedule of where you guys are. And, I, I, you know, most, and again, you know, maybe this is my ignorance about like, you know, theater. But it seems like most touring productions go to like a city for like three weeks, a month, six weeks, yeah. something like that. And this, this is literally... Three days, I think you guys are in Seattle or it's, technically uh, Tacoma. And it's then you... very fast paced. Uh, we move very quickly. And I think also, I mean, they're in arenas, so we do get a lot of people in every single night. Um, but yeah, we travel weekly to new cities. So it's, we've gone all over and we're still going. Um, and it's kind of keeps everything really fresh for us. Mm. But I mean, it would be really cool to stay in cities and explore more, but we do get a couple of days. And, um, I mean, at the moment, we're only in Seattle for today, but... <laughs> and then you're like back on a plane going I, yeah. someplace for the, like for the performance or something? Um, well, I mean, this week, we're actually on a one-week holiday, okay. yeah. so we're all spread out everywhere just for this week, and wow, then we come back crazy. and work. Yeah, that's that's the funny thing as well, is that, you know, some people in the whole... Like, sometimes when we get, like, a week break or something, you know, for instance, this week, there's some people in Jamaica at the moment, so, like... Wow, so that's, everyone's, it's, it's, it's everyone's like really just traveling all the time. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you can do whatever you want, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Presumably... Yeah. Well, I mean, you wouldn't go... You wouldn't go to the other side of the world or something. Well, you that's wouldn't just because it takes a lot. I mean, if you're like, maybe you want to ride on a plane, I don't know. I mean, going back to us. 
Australia seems a little bit. <laughs> you spend yeah, like a, a couple much. of days and then have to leave. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's tough. Um, yeah, sadly, you're coming to Seattle right when we get the rain again, which <laughs> I apologize for. I'm used to it, man. I mean, um, I'm really from Mel- Melbourne. Melbourne is very, is rainy? very rainy. Yeah. Yeah. It's my favorite I would consider weather. consider it quite like yep. this, yeah. Interesting. She's from Brisbane where it's always sunny. So we did just yeah. come from like 12 degrees in Winnipeg, Canada last okay, so week. This is, so this, this is, is like much better. 12, <laughs> yeah. 12 degrees. Oh, yeah. Fahrenheit. 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, that's crazy. In terms of the show itself, um, one of the obvious questions I have being I'm a big fan of the movie what is it like in context to the movie? Is it the same story? Because it looks like from the photos and whatnot that there are definitely at least some of the sort of signature scenes from the movie. But is it is it its own story? Is it a condensed version of the movie? What exactly is it? It's a kind of there's a couple of new surprises and twists that are going to be in there, you know, somewhere. But primarily, it is based off the film. Okay. So you know, it does go off the film, but really like. The really special part about this show is that, I mean, um, you know, you're really, you really do as an audience member feel like you're in, you know, in Burke itself or in, in the, um, you know, the town because, I mean, all of the, the technology that goes into this show, like, I mean, like we've got, uh, you know, we don't actually have any physical set. We've just got projection that covers yeah, the floor like and the then the back, the, the, yeah, yeah. Videos or whatever that are online, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically, with all of that, I mean, we've you know, and the flying dragons and everything like that, mm-hmm. you can you can create an image where it almost like coordinated with the projection, where it looks like Toothless is flying through you know mountains and up yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know through canyons and things, and and it really does you know. There's not only that, but there's like you know, if he flies into a tree, there's also leaf blowers around the side. So you know, um, it really awesome. like it's almost like you really feel like you get hit by the leaves and you you're in the scene. Well, you make an interesting point, like, okay, you come from a dance background, I I don't know about you, but when they're like, all right, we want you on top of this animatronic dragon, we're going to, like, fly you out into the crowd, what is your initial, like, what is your response to that? Like, is it it cool, or is it like, um... I'm riding a dragon. (laughs) Where's the harness? Like, like, that seems like a weird, like, (laughs) position. It is very unusual to describe your your job to someone. You're like, oh, I fly dragons. (laughs) Um, We are, it's very safe. I mean, we do have harnesses on, and we're working with, like, you know, world's best riggers, but I um, I had never been on a roller coaster. I um, oh, I'm wow. not really a a Are you ride from, type of person. From Brisbane, yeah. Yeah, I honestly had never been on a roller coaster, and I was like, okay, I'm about to sit on a dragon, and um, it's pretty much a dragon roller coaster. So, I mean, I'm holding on to hiccup, but I was I'm actually holding on to hiccup. I feel like that's hiccup. worse than a roller coaster because the <laughs> roller coaster theoretically like you're barred into the like yeah. the car. <laughs> but that one, I mean, I guess with besides the harness, are you like are you tacked onto the dragon itself or are you tacked it's, on? I yeah. mean, we've got we've got movement, but it is safe and it is fun and I, I am in. acting, so yeah. I'm thinking about other things. Um, but <laughs> it'd be interesting now to go on a roller coaster to see how comfortable I am because I, you know, it yeah. is it is like a it's fun doing it every night, but I am maybe comfortable now i guess i guess you could say and it's not scary it's, it's more fun but, but the really good thing about the fact that it is quite a, a little bit like a little bit scary even after a while <laughs> is that you know it, you don't even have to act that much like it's mm. like it's like it's all just real uh, genuine emotion like you know wow i could really fall off this dragon right now <laughs> Like as he's you know you know flying through the air or you know there's a scene where Toothless gets you know a bit moody and upset and he decides he's gonna fly up and down and you know and um and try and throw us off the you know throw us off his back. In saying that, it is very safe and very well rehearsed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I would have to imagine that's the thing. Like I, I was watching that documentary or whatever it was on PBS, and that was the first time I saw that they're like, I mean. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but according to some fun facts I saw somewhere, I think they were saying that the largest dragon's head is the size of a blue whale. Is that, in fact, true? Yes. <laughs> like, in fact, it's so big that, I mean, like, they only they could only build the head. Because, yeah. I mean, the rest of the, rest of the dragon um, wouldn't be able to fit on stage if they built the whole thing. So um, the rest of it is just projected. That's projected oh, around the wow. outside. I'm just, so... That, and that's just the head. So <laughs> I'm just putting this all together in my mind. That's probably that big dragon in the movie. So yeah, yeah. That, would, that would all make logical sense. I, I mean, was like, I don't know what that was, but that sounds cool. To to the movie, I would say it would actually be to scale, like wow. from the movie from the movie. Yeah. 
So now, now that you're in this, have you guys gotten like deep into that how to train your dragon world? Because I know they did. They, I mean, obviously the movie was a big hit. They've done like some short films in addition to that. They're doing a sequel to the movie. Yeah. There, I mean, there's a book series. Like how da- how far down that rabbit hole have you guys gone now that you're in this production? Um, I mean, I've definitely I'm keeping up to track with everything, and that's the greatest thing about this this story these characters and everything about it is because it's ongoing there is a lot mm. happening it's um everything is is still really fresh and everyone's still really into it and that's awesome i mean for every part of everything that this company is doing that's really good for us and um it's fun i mean i i love it i love dragons and i love the characters and keeping up to date with everything the storyline i mean the storyline is pretty cool i mean as a teenage like boy like dragons and you know vikings i mean it's kind of it's kind of kind of really cool, you <laughs> know? yeah it is funny to think you know sort of that the movie was was released as a 3d film like i don't know if you can make it any more 3d than this experience like this yeah. seems like it like yeah. this is it yeah in terms of the production itself <laughs> this is only a personal question just out of my own curiosity maybe yeah. other people here is it a musical <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. See, that's a relief to me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. dislike. It would. It wouldn't work as a music. I don't think. I mean, uh, dragons and and music, like you know, happy music. I don't it think it seems really like they turn anything well into a musical. Yeah. Like I'm not. I, 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 like I'm not. I don't have. A necessary... Although, they're, oh, sorry, sorry. No, um, no. I was, I was just gonna say, like you know, I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with musicals. I'm completely fine with them. I just find that they take me out of the story. Like they where can. they just like yeah. pause the pause the action, they sing for three minutes, and then they and start then, back yeah, up. Yeah. If it's within the context of the story, I'm totally good. But yeah, that was one of those concerns. I was like, is this going to be turned into <laughs> for a song moment or something? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was a little, I was a little worried. I was like, is he going to be singing on Toothless or something? As they fly, I don't know. Like yeah, right as we're coming out of the mountain, it's just what was that over there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's sing about yeah, we it. We saw the joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, okay, maybe if there's some snapping action, yeah, that yeah, would, yeah, that would yeah. make yeah. it okay. Uh, but well, there's no live singing, but the um. The soundtrack for the stage show, um, I mean, it's a combination of, of composers, but we also have Yonzi, which composed the music for the film. Which is great. It's the score is unbelievable. Yeah. And Ooh. it's it's one of my favorite parts of the show. The, the soundtrack is so chilling. It gives you goosebumps. And it really, it really helps with everything. You know, it's really powerful. That's honestly one of the parts that also makes it easy easy to to act on stage because I mean like you, you just really the the music is just so kind of raw and like it, it's really just plays with your emotion on stage in a way it's really good. It's just, it's yeah. it's funny that you're like you know as a teenage boy working with dragons is awesome and mm. I'm sitting here thinking I'm like I'm 30 but I think working with dragons, <laughs> dragons would be pretty yeah. awesome. Think like, yeah. Dragon. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I think dragons in any context. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Dragons. I think any <laughs> job involving dragons. If only is they were awesome. actually real. I mean oh. They're so close to it being be. real. It looks pretty <laughs> it is impressive close, from what I've seen. I mean, like, every night on stage working with these big creatures, it's like working with a very unusual looking human or a really big pet. Like, they all have their own characters, their own personality, and each dragon has about three to four people operating it live yeah. well, that, that at was, one time. That's so. the thing that was sort of like, I mean, I don't know if I'd say it was scary point, but I was like, I don't know how comfortable I would be working with something that's probably, like, several tons in weight. Yeah. It's controlled by, like, electronics. Like, I can't even imagine, like, you know, there's a glitch and it, like, bites your hand or something. like. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, because it is live, we have um, the puppeteers up at the in the in the audience area and they're controlling it so they can see us and we can see the dragon obviously so if it's if there is something Any like something chance, in the way yeah. like even a prop on stage it's in the way they can they're in control of it at all times so it's not a button that they just I'm, press I'm, to I'm, say start, i'm just imagining you know? like you know like i don't know like there's so many computer viruses or something, yeah, you know, like, yeah. but like we need to do a patch for this and they like, yeah. demo, and then suddenly like it jerks when you're flying or something like that. That's just what I'm imagining. There's just like, it's the, the animatronics are just so amazing that it's just like, I, I can't imagine working with something that's, I don't know, thousands of pounds. And twice. so realistic. Yeah. Honestly, my mind. what happens when like, if there, if there ever is some kind of glitch or something that does maybe go wrong? There's like a, I think it's called a dead man switch that happens on it, and like 
I think it's only ha- it's only happened about about once. I think actually, yeah, about once on stage. Only happened once, but like it's pretty funny. But sometimes it'll just go like into okay. like as you can imagine, like a robot Instantly, just goes, yeah. like okay. that. It has a little nap. But they can they can bring it back up, but they'll just have it, like it'll probably be there for like maybe like five seconds and then have to go back to That's you know, cool. to working again. But it was it's pretty funny when that did Sometimes you can't even yeah. notice. <laughs> <laughs> now that you guys have worked in this, I mean, how long has this been going on? Exactly a year okay. this week. So you've been doing this for a year. As as people who are stars in the show, what do you guys find to be the coolest aspect of it? Or what do you think people might be surprised to discover when they go to see it? Well, the coolest part of this whole experience for me is, um, I mean, we are talking about it before. It's the fact that this is the first time it's being done. And to mm. experience the whole creative process from the beginning is something that I'll never forget. I mean, this is the biggest thing that I could probably ever do. Yeah, I think it'd be tough. To, so it's it's to go unbelievable to I mean, to have the opportunity. I mean, essentially, I mean, yeah, it's it's you couldn't really put the show into into a genre that exists today. Like, I mean, it really, I mean, it's not circus. It's not. It's not. It's it's it's, it's, it's not, own thing. Really, it's not I mean, theater, like, it's you not can't. Thing. You can't see it anywhere else but going to How to Train Your Dragon. So, I mean, really, you've got, you've got something completely unique and fresh for the audience to come and see. That's pretty awesome. You know, like you said, it's not going to be like the next musical or something like that or, well, you know, like that's, that's been produced. Well, it's, it, I mean, just the, like the pace that you guys are doing, too, is kind of um, crazy. In terms of yourselves, do you guys have any place where people can find out updates about you or what you have going on besides this? I mean, Twitters, websites, anything like that? I am all over that. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a social media guru. So I've got Twitter, um, and yeah, it's at SmackTwit. That's my nickname, Smack. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, I, I update all the time, you know, what cities we're into, um, performance updates, and any media that we've done, anything like that about the show. It's all up there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah Macrina, but like, I mean, like, really, it's quite ironic because, I mean, on stage, you know, character, she's like, she's quite a. You know, she likes to beat up Hiccup on stage a little bit as the as as her character. So in a way, yeah, it's quite ironic. I have to name. be I have to be uh, very feisty on stage, but mm. I'm not that competitive in real life. In real life, life no. no. <laughs> uh, and you? What about you? Um, I am actually kind of the opposite. Actually, I no um, I guess uh, not re- not really that much social media in a way. I mean, I have Facebook, but it's it's private and everything. But um, no, I guess I guess um, the real. The the thing is on on stage, I really like to give kind of my own personality to the to the to the performance. So I mean, if you come and see the performance and everything like that, you'll you really get to see. <laughs> I will be coming of, yeah, to that yeah. performance. I'm looking forward to it. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. I look forward to it. Uh, it's December sixth through the ninth. Yeah. In, in also, mm-hmm. um, there's a twenty percent discount if you go onto the website DreamWorks Dragons Live and you just type in the code Viking. Wow. And twenty percent off all the shows. Sweet. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, where where any other cities coming up that you want to mention for people? Uh, we'll be, for the rest of the year, we uh, head to Sacramento, Fresno, San, um, Jose. San Jose for Christmas. So Anaheim yeah. as well, yeah. All right. Very cool. Uh, thank you guys so much. And uh, check out more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Cheers. Thanks. Can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the sound. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't